Hey guys, and welcome to Firefall. Now, for those of you who've never played this game, this is a MMO first-person shooter, uh, a massively multi-online game, where your uh, your goal is to run around and defeat some of the things on the map, level up your suits, and uh, just have a good time overall. Now, you can see this is the map, and it's uh, an entire world. Obviously, it's not all the way open. Uh, you have to slowly open it. Go back over to where we're actually at. And you can see just how much of it is open. Uh, not a whole lot. And we'll go ahead and zoom back into where we're at. And this is just one little tiny uh, part on that map, as you saw before when I zoom out. We're in the Coral Forest. If you go over here to Cliff's Ed, that's a whole nother map, as well as all these. So you can just imagine just how big this game can be. And each part of this map can be taken over by the uh, Chosen. As you can see, that's what the black area is. The little uh, cloud right there is uh, kind of a nasty little thing that you can't run into without getting hurt, or at least not for very long. And they slowly, uh, bit by bit, will take back the map if you don't keep it from them. And then, of course, if you want to take part of the map, you have to run into there. and It's a whole long, drawn-out process, which I'll show you later. But for now, I wanted to go over some of the basics of uh, playing Firefall what you need to know, how you're going to play, and things of that sort. So if you come over here to a battle frame station, they're all over the map. Uh, you can find one in pretty much every city, uh, multiple ones in every city, I should say. There, there are uh, plenty of them. You uh, hit your interactive button. Whatever you set that as, default, it's the E key. Go ahead and click on it. And this will open up uh, basically your class menu. You can pick what class of suit you want to play. Now the suit determines what weapons you have, and what abilities you have to use. So basically, instead of picking like an EverQuest or some of the other ones, you want to pick a Paladin or you want to pick a Wizard. Uh, you don't have to do that in this one. This one you can change at any time. Uh, and you can upgrade these suits by leveling up with them. You have to click on them. So I'll change real quick. Zoom out. And you can see my suit changed. I'll go back in real quick. Pick a different one. And you can see my suit changed again. And if you look right underneath my health, or right above my health, I should say, which is a green bar on the very bottom of the mat or screen, uh, in the middle, you'll see these buttons, and they're all locked right now. But if I picked one that I already have skill in, say my engineer, you will see they unlock. These are your abilities uh, that you can use for that specific class. Now, if we log back into this, you'll see that underneath my engineer are two other suits that are locked. These are actually suits that are under the category of engineer. But they've been modified slightly uh, to go into a different kind of field, uh, say, more towards uh, your turret or more towards your weapons and things of that sort. So you can unlock these later on and really tweak your character to be the way you want it to be. Uh, once you've done uh, picking out the suit that you want, you can come over to this little thing right here called the Battle Frame Garage. Now these are all over the map as well. You can you never really have a hard time finding either one of these uh, little devices. And again, you're going to click on it using your interactive button, which is the E key in my case, and it's the default. Now before you get so overwhelmed, you're like, whoa, that's, that's a pretty big screen, right? What, what's all that for? It's pretty simple. Now the stuff on your left are items that you pick up. So I have quite a few because I've been playing for a while. Uh, but when you first start off, you won't have anything over here. If you look down here on the bottom left of your little tab, you'll see uh, it says 100 out of 155. Now, 100 is as many items as I have right now in my inventory. 155 is the amount of items I'm allowed to carry at any given time. So if you have more than uh, you need, uh, you can salvage, which is this little button right here. You can click on it, pops up, and you can drag your item into there and click the uh, check mark. Now I can actually do that right now. I'll drag one of the ones I don't need. Let me look at this real quick. 600. Yeah, these all suck. So you can drag it down there and drop, and you'll see that it's in there. Or you can simply click on one without dragging, just left click it, and it will automatically put it down there. Now say you put one down there you didn't mean to. You can go right above it where the little X is on the right hand side of it, and click that and it will put it back in your inventory. Now, we don't really need that one, so we're going to keep it in there, and if when you're done, you hit the little check mark, and it will ask you to make sure, are you sure you're about to salvage two items, and you say yes. 
And what it really does is take them apart and get the base components that you need, like research points. You're going to need those to uh, construct items, to research stuff. Uh, and crystals is what your basically your uh, your currency is. So you're going to go ahead and hit done. Now with uh, your inventory, that's something you're going to learn through the game. You're going to find out what's best and what's not. Anything with a little green parentheses next to the number, uh, if you look at it down here on the bottom where it says durability, uh, the weapon will get damaged over time as you get hurt and as you die, uh, and you'll have to repair it. Uh, power rating says 9, and then it has a parentheses of 4.5 in green. That means that is better by 4.5 uh, than what I'm using right now. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean the weapon is better, because as you see, this is a assault rifle, and the weapon is comparing it to uh, is uh, either my uh, Tesla rifle or uh, my grenade launcher. Now, neither one of those is an assault rifle, so yeah, it may be better on a certain stats, uh, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Now, obviously, the damage per second would be higher in a grenade launcher than, than a rifle, uh, but the rate of fire would be better on a rifle. But if you're looking at two machine guns, because you have a machine gun equipped and it has that on there, it's going to go ahead and tell you that it's better than what you have on. The same thing for your abilities. This is your abilities row right here, and these are your abilities down here on the bottom of the map, or the bottom of your... Uh, inventory screen. Now you're unlock these as you play the game. Uh, you can see it up here on your tab. Right now we're on the characters tab. If you go over the perks tab, uh, you'll see some of the stuff that you've unlocked. But we go back to abilities now. It's the same concept with this. If it's in parentheses in green, it's better than what you're uh, wearing. But you can only have four abilities equipped at any one time. So some of these I don't have equipped. Like this one right here is a deployable shield. When I cast that, it puts like a big bubble down uh, that I'm protected within. I can't fire out of it, and people can't fire in, but I'm protected inside as for like a little emergency. And it only lasts for so long, I don't have so much health. But I don't have that on right now, in fact. What I do have on is my heavy turn, and then I got uh, my claymores. I got a supply station, which puts down uh, ammo and health. And then I got uh, anti-personnel turret. This is basically another turret that I can throw down. But instead of being automated, I actually jump inside, or anybody in my group, or anybody nearby, I should say, is able to jump inside and uh, fire this weapon. It's it's really cool. It does a lot of damage. This one right here is uh, an automatic turret. I throw it down, pretty much forget about it. I can, I can heal it with my main weapon simply by pushing the second mouse button while I'm aimed at it, and I will constantly heal it with a little stream. And the claymores are pretty much what you would think they would be. They are just claymores that you throw down. Now you have a primary weapon, which uh, runs out of ammo. And then you have a secondary weapon, which never runs out of ammo. Now the primary weapon is always stronger than your secondary weapon. Uh, but it runs out of ammo. It only has a certain amount, and you'll constantly have to keep looking for uh, more ammo. There are certain classes, uh, like the Juggernaut, uh, who have Gatling guns or chain guns. And they will run out of ammo very easily, and it's uh, somewhat difficult for them to find more ammo, at least on a regular basis, as fast as they use it. This class doesn't have that problem, uh, because I can throw down my supply station and just get more ammo whenever I feel like it. Uh, so it's very nice if you run around with somebody who can do a lot of damage uh, and requires ammo for you to do, uh, you know, keep throwing that down as, as, as much as, uh, as you can uh, to allow them to be able to do the damage they want. Now, your secondary weapon... Uh, each class can equip certain kind of weapons in there. Um, as you can see, I can put a shotgun down in there. If you click on it and drag it down, you'll see which ones are highlighted. See, I can't put that as my main weapon, but I can put it down here on the bottom. So I can have an assault rifle as well on my bottom one. And you'll see right here that it's primary weapons and secondary weapons to list from. You also have battle cores. Battle cores are things that will help your health and your jet engine. Uh, jet engine... Uh, you want to set to whatever key you want, and it's uh, basically your jump, but it's a really, really nice jump. As you can see, the little bar ticking down on the right side in the middle of the screen, that is my fuel gauge. When it reaches zero, he runs out of fuel and then will plummet to the ground. And he will get hurt if he's too high up. In fact, I'll just go all the way up and take a little damage. That's uh, not high enough, but... You get the point. You can move around. It's almost like Iron Man. You can move around, go back and forth. 
you can really do a lot with that. You also get the ability to crouch, so you can move around like that. And you also get the ability to sprint. Now, I usually will go into my options and toggle all those on, uh, but you don't necessarily have to. You can play this game with a 360 controller or actually quite a few different controllers. And there's an event going on right next door. They pop up pretty much everywhere on the map. Now, one of the last stations I'm going to show you right here is the new U. You can go inside of it. And you can change the character that you created. You can change, uh, you know, whether it's going to be male or female. You can change the way your head looks, the hair, facial style, pretty much everything you did. So that if you made your character and later on you decided, uh, you don't quite like the way he looks, you can come in here and change that. It's not a station you're going to be using all that often, but it does give you a little bit more customizable options, uh, you know, if you decide to change things later on. Now, as I said, this is for your ammo. These are ones that they put down for you. Just walk right over it, and it will refill your ammo. In fact, let me shoot some ammo. Now, this is just holding down the left trigger. And then he'll reload, and you can see it takes a little while to reload, but not too long. And I run over it, and now my ammo is full back up. This one over here is obviously health. You simply have to run over it when you're hurt, and you'll pick it up just the same. Now this little guy right here is a glider. If you get in it, you will start to glide. In fact, I'll show you that real quick. This is a very good way uh, to fast travel across the map. You want to make sure that your wings stay a little bit tilted downwards and as level as possible. If you're not tilted downwards, you're going to stall out. It's not an airplane. It doesn't have any power of its own. It's simply using the height that you have to glide further into one direction. And that's as simple it is right there. Now, the first couple of times I used it, I plummeted straight to the ground until I figured out how to use, uh, you know, the glider the right way. Uh, so don't be uh, dismayed if that what's happened to you. Uh, just get a little bit of practice, try it out again and again, and eventually you'll get the hang of it. And it really does save you a lot of time traveling from one place to another. Again, we just traveled to a whole another outpost, and you can see right here that the. Uh, little machines that I was showing you are again right here these they're all over the place you don't ever have to worry about that and this is a whole another town right here for those of you uh, who like these videos uh, please hit the like button subscribe leave a comment below or as always hit me up in game thanks again for watching